Okay, I'm back. Well, that little breakage there kind of gave me a chance to think a little bit more about all this. I thought maybe I could have even blown out my little light, uh, test light, you know. And I was thinking maybe this is working kind of like the uh, <coughs> relay does. If that green is actually a big old ground and uh, goes through the relay to the, the little black ground, and that completes the connection and the hot one may be on the relay it may be just to keep it open they, they work in different ways they call them normally closed and normally open well I'm sure that's a normally open and then it closes uh, you know and completes the circuit now why then I was thinking well if there's uh, I can't even explain it uh, Anyway, I can't see. Um, trying to use the same hole that I already used. That light takes a little blinding me. There it is. Let's see if can that be seen? Sort of, I guess. Does that help or hurt? I don't think it makes much difference. The sun is shining almost right on this spot. Let's see if the horn honks again. I'm starting to wonder, well what I was starting to wonder is maybe the relay's bad. And I keep worrying, I'm worrying about the switch up in the in the steering uh, up in the, ho the horn button switch up in the steering column but if that was bad the relay shouldn't click I wouldn't think and the uh, horn wouldn't have honked it well if it was kind of intermittently connected which I've had to repair many times over the years so that could still be it if it won't consistently honk uh, before and also I think that little connector I was going to use is way so small I'm afraid it's just going to cut these wires I don't have a bigger one than that uh, let me honk that horn again Yeah, I hit it. It wouldn't honk, and then I hit it pretty hard, and then it honked. I don't know if this has even got anything in to, to do with making it honk. Now, yeah, maybe that switch up there in the steering column. Uh, could have been just a coincidence that I had that on there and it worked. that down. I'm going to uh, spring this with me this time. Leave it there. I'm going to show you what I've been doing in here and I think I'll get I actually hit it so hard trying to make it honk again that it hurt my Oh look. See it didn't. So you know what? That says to me the common thing that always goes out on these things is what it probably is. So, I'm trying to get this in a way that it will aim at the horn button. The sun's shining right in here now. I was thinking, well, maybe I could turn my. Oh, and it's just making it where you can't see anything, making the camera not work right, looks like. Uh, the other seat's shady. But it was not, it's already after, probably about 12.30 noon. So if I turn the truck around, which actually means moving the car behind it and then turning it around, uh, it won't be long. That sun's really, really going to be hot on the other side there. So I don't think that'll be much help. I think I do have a big old, <laughs> I have a big old umbrella I could put here. They didn't make it hard to get in and out. But I think what I need to do is take this off. And, uh, 
and pro I, may, I, may, I probably may end up having to well actually I think you can see the switch so if I don't have to take it out then I, I'll be able to spray some take the little cap off and then spray some wet contact cleaner in there that may be all I actually really need to do uh, let me go get the contact cleaner Why didn't I do that from the beginning, you ask? Well, well, I don't know. I'm just asking myself that same question. Let's see how many things I can put on. I've got a few tools to drop. I actually caught that. Got the contact cleaner hit the ground and the straw went off into the melt and wild blue yonder. Damn it. Oh, there it is. No cussing. I used three years I didn't cuss at all. Getting old and cranky. This nice little white thing out of the floor, so when I put my feet in there, I won't mess it up. Yeah. Let's see. Now, just spraying this in there without taking that off is probably just going to be. It's probably it may start honking on me when I try to get it out too. Let's see. Uh, of course, I got to get up and inset. But, oh no, I don't necessarily. I don't think you can see very good. Oh well, maybe maybe I'll be lucky and it'll. Oh, it came out really easy. Yeah, maybe I'll be lucky and it will. Uh, okay. I can get the horn button thing off, I think, without pulling the steering wheel or anything. It's been years since I've had one of these apart. Where's my trusty little... There it is. I have my, my little bottle. I, I kept it in here just to put screws in here, I guess, whenever. So I'll put them in there. Yeah, I think it's going to come out. And then I think I can see the, it may even want to pop out, I can't remember. But it seems to me that I remember if you're going to get that horn button itself all the way out. I feel like I got a shock. You don't get shocks from DC. Okay, that. Yeah, sometimes see that they get, it's pretty clean. I've cleaned it up. Probably the last time I had trouble with it, I cleaned it up to try to get it working right. Okay. And that little plate is a contact plate. There. It's been sanded on. But it could, well, that's a little bit rusty. I need to sand it. I need to sand her down a little bit. Let's see, the uh, switch. Well, I think you have to short it. And push it. I think. Yeah, just pushing it doesn't do it. That's you know what? That seems like it's. Well, I'm going to spray it with contact cleaner, but I think it's sparking and stuff. So I think it's making a good connection. Maybe it, it is the uh, relay after all, and it just works and not works. Imagine it hasn't been all that long since I've done what I'm doing right now. I mean, well, two years at least, but I hear the clicking of the relay. So we're getting a connection. So does that mean the relay's bad? Maybe the horn's just in bad shape and it only works whenever it really wants to.
But every single time I touch. Oh, okay. It has to be pressed in far enough. Ah. It could be that it's not going in far enough by that contactor because when it it's really not too rusty when it goes in now it works I probably will clean it up a bit but Uh, yeah, so I do believe in getting good connections there. What did I do? Oh, I left those screws in the whole thing. And if you have never seen them, that's what they look like. I think you can see it. I, I think my screen's just dim. I think the, as much light as there is right there, I would think you could see that. But and there's a little plastic ring that holds them in place, so I'm going to leave it like that. And I believe this needs to go. There's a notch in it. And it needs to go up or down. I wasn't paying attention. Let's see. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it needs to go so that your feel will go on there, right? The notch goes in there. Goes up in that. So, and I think it's shaped so that it only goes... Yeah, no, it goes that way. So the notch is going to go up. I think it may only go on there one way. I just got it stuck in there. Not too bad though. Yeah, it only fits in there one way. It's arched on the top. Yeah, and the screw. So you can't put it in there wrong. Well, you could. Actually, you could. There's three ways you could put it in, but you want that notch on the top. Okay. So afterthought's always good. Now let's see. I don't have my magnifying glass with me, but. The main place it makes contact is this little knob right here. I guess it would contact any of it really, but you see this, this plastic, it's also a guide for this. Uh, it's a guide for this to keep it from not grounding when you don't want it to, you know. So uh, I think this knob is the main thing. It looks pretty clean. I want to make sure that there's... It's been pretty rusty and I sanded it down. Let's take it in, get out of the sun here. Take it in so I can clean on it. If there, there's a fan in, in the garage at least. Have my tools stuck in my little drink caddy there. And I have the coolest thing. It's uh oh it has a magnifying glass on it. Yeah, it's not rusty, but I'll clean on it. But anyway, it's been in the heat too much. A compass. Where is the? There. It's a compass. Car compass. You can hang it on the string if you wanted to. It's got a little measure on it, and you have to hold it that way to point to north, I think. But I don't think it's. I if it's working right. Unless the Earth has shifted on its axis, because I think it's pointing south. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe broke. Okay, let's go in. So yeah, I don't think I'll be pulling the horn off this one yet. And the other reason is because I got to looking at this horn. It, I got thinking about it. It has two wires coming in. They're both red, so I'm figuring those are both. Well, that doesn't mean a thing in this truck. One could be hot and one could be ground. And then there's that extra little wire that, ground wire that's not even hooked up. So those are probably both hot wires. So I think this horn might even work on a different system. You know, it might not be wired even near, nearly at all the same. Even though it's kind of easy to get to, it probably wouldn't help me. Like I thought it might. But I'm going to get up in here. And... Uh, of the fan for a little while and um, figuring all this out and cleaning this up with the sandpaper and everything. Okay. The 
the same. Yeah, that's an old monitor that don't work. It just goes black. It just went black on us. But I kept thinking I might try and fix it. Okay, so... I guess that's about as good as it gets. <sighs> I really need to get all the sun from it anyway. I, this is the most in the sun I've been in years. I'm lucky it's not really hot. I've already passed out. I don't know what the temperature is, but I'm figuring it's somewhere in the low 80s right now. Oh, man. Are we looking at the top of my cup? Just about. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, while I'm here, I was going to plug this into the charger so that it wouldn't go down on me. It is still recording, but of course it doesn't want to reach from the right there. I can do it over. There, I think that'll work. Okay. Sending this, I think it's really just an excuse to cool off a little bit right at right the moment. Let's see. We got some, uh, it's gonna use that an awful lot, but the edges are still pretty good on it. They're probably still doing good enough. That's 500 or 400. 400. Gooey stuff in it to do any good. I don't know what I was sanding. It looks like I've all been sanding on the. I have brand new sandpaper down there. That's always the trouble to get out. Yeah, maybe that'll work. I, uh, looks like I might have been sanding on my backsplash. That's probably gel coat that I put on my backsplash from my bathroom machine. That's some gooey junk. You know we don't use the side of this thing, but it seems to be working in the thing. That same pepper is brand new and it's holding it still for me. So. I was thinking that this would, I think actually gets too hot to hold it pretty quickly. That piece of thin metal. I figured it would, since it's already been sanded before on rougher paper, I thought this might be better. It's been up enough that it kind of got a... I mean, you kind of wonder, is that bent spot right there where it was trying to make contact? You only make on this, a contact on this, the button only makes contact in one spot. I was wondering if I was even in that picture. So, uh, you can pay attention to where you put it on and make sure the shiny spots aren't on the button, though. I don't exactly know where it, the button is likely to touch it. I didn't pay attention. I'm just going to go all the way around it. Go to the side that's touching the button and the, uh, I guess what it does then is touches the button and the uh, metal part of where you screw it down. 
that makes the contact. I don't think this metal part here actually does anything for the circuit. It might. I, mean, I don't think it does. I think all it does is this is this is basically the switch contact of the switch. I can't believe how quick that gets hot. I don't know if this will change a thing. It needs to be done at any rate. I do, like I said earlier, I do have two brand new relays, and if I can figure out how to wire one of them up, they're not the same exact one. They wouldn't plug in there. I'd have to wire that. Of course, I could just order one, or really would need to order. I don't want to drive it around without the inspection sticker. And at the same time, getting a bigger, expensive ticket. So I would order it from somewhere and order me some winter wipers too and get it all ready and then try to go get it inspected and then come back and then order my tags. And that's the way you do it in Texas now. You, they're all, you get it inspected first and then you then you, then you you can buy your tags. These two, they were separate for all my life. You still had to have your sticker before you could get your tag. Actually, no, I think you used to have to have your tags before you could get your sticker. Well, they used to do it, I think. Anyway, one way or the other. Let's at least my little switch, I think I replaced that little switch I mean, over the years. At least it seems to be making good contact. Might be the real. I, I could stick my meter on it and mess around with it, but I wouldn't really know what I was getting. And I looked around online and I didn't see any quick way to... Actually, I did see a pretty interesting way to test relays, but... They're using this weird meter that just beeps and stuff. I never seen anything like it. They weren't using the multimeter. So I didn't really. I mean, I got the idea that he tested it and it was good, but I don't know what the heck any of that meant. All those beeps and stuff. Looks like it was expensive too. I think it was made just for cars. I just now got a digital multimeter. I've used an analog one since 1975 or six. And that is great. Because <laughs> I can't see the lines anymore on my analog one. Now I don't think that that's going to really be too much of a problem with making contact now. Yeah, this doesn't make contact, I don't believe, but I'm going to hit those little bumps just in case they do. There are some spots that could be part of the circuit, I don't think so. So basically this is just a big old switch. Okay. Now. I'll put some uh, I used to I used to use WD-40. A lot of people still use WD-40, but WD-40, it's really more of a cleaner. It's not really a lubricant. It says it on the can. That's how I discovered it a long time ago back in the 70s. Uh, it'll lubricate for a short time and then it'll dry up. But it also leaves residue on electrical stuff. You, uh, you can spray it on your distributor and in it, wires and in your cap to get you like you get it wet. It will dry. It will dissipate the water and dry it out and, you, and it'll get your car running again. But it'll also cause Back when we had points in our in our vehicles, it would cause them to get a black film over them, and uh, and it'll do that to all your contacts inside your distributor cap after after a few days to a week. So then you got to get in there and clean it out again. So uh, something that's for electrical, like that electrical spray I use, is better. You don't really need this lubricated, and it would be good to have it protected from corrosion. I'm trying to think. 
I do. I don't think I'd put that in here. Maybe that stuff I put on the battery really uh, put on your battery terminals. That reddish jelly type junk that stays a long time. Matter of fact, I was thinking of putting a dab on that on that hole that I made in the uh, wire because uh, uh, you know when you at the ends, you know how your wires corrode and then they won't conduct well. Of course, you can, after they get really bad, you can cut them off. And then close to a battery, you that white, uh, really bad corrosion will crawl right way up, up to several, four to six inches down your line. And you either got to, you know, if it's long enough, you can cut it off, or you got to add another pick, pick piece on there. But up in the middle, that's going to let uh, moisture and everything get in there when you poke a hole in it. I don't like to do that. Uh, and uh, perhaps start corrosion. And, you know, you could think, well, electricity goes through the strands of the wire and it shouldn't matter. Uh, but it seems like it does, and uh, maybe maybe it goes the way electricity flows through wire. It may have a lot to do with not just the wire strand itself, but all of them together touching each other. I think maybe it does. I've watched a bunch of videos on electricity lately, and then earliest discoveries of it up till now. I, mean, I don't remember anything that would answer that for me. But, you know, I realized just how mysterious it still is. Uh, there's a lot they still don't know about it. I know how to use it really well, but don't know every little thing about it. I darn sure don't. But anyway. Uh, okay, now what will I do? Okay, now what I'll do is, I think I may put some of that stuff in there. And, uh, Put this back. What I may do is put it back and consider it a good switch <coughs> and then go messing with the uh, relay again. That's the hardest part of today is getting under that dash. Getting to that thing. I can bring it in, try to run, you know, I can do some continuity tests on it and stuff, but I don't know what they're telling me really anything. It's got some in. Uh, Spots that will, I'll just turn it so that those spots aren't on that on that uh, switch, that button switch. And let's see. Spraying that contact cleaner there is not going to help that. You know, just sanding it is just, just as good or better. Probably better. It would be better. But I might get some of that. Okay, where is that stuff? It's in my toolbox, I think. Oh, I think it's in my in my blazer toolbox. Um, it's uh, I don't think it's in here. It's hard to lift this big old heavy. Probably can't see what I'm talking about, but it's hard to lift it. So let's go on and go back out there and uh, I'm starting to wonder what time it is and all that stuff, man. You know? 1243, that one that's plugged in and I think it's running. Where's the other one? Oh, there it is. It's running. I try to leave them. I've been. This thing is. Just, I, I, I let them back up to Google Photos. But they'll. Uh, lately they've been running. It doesn't. I thought it was running two or three phones at once was causing me a problem with them not backing up, but that's not it. Still got, it's had three to back up for three three days now. I left it on two nights. I think it's gotten out of whack somehow. I've had that trouble on and off ever since I started got these phones. So I think I need to turn this up. Let me put it more level until I decide where I'm going to set in the tr set it in the truck. So let's get this stuff. Chairs spinning like a gyroscope not going where I want it to. Let's see, my tools that I need I think are still in there. Okay. This is the uh, cleaner that I've been using. There's all different kinds. This is pretty good stuff, this brand here. It's not real cheap. It's uh, 7 to $10 a can, I think. All that stuff, yeah. That gel that I wanted to put in here. Okay, let's see. Are we 
right on it. Pretty much. A little high, I guess. That's <coughs> pretty, pretty good. Okay, now. Um, let me get that spray over here. Yeah. I think it's in this tool box. Oh, it's metric. I think I think we're gonna have to use the converter. Okay, I'm trying to find the converter. You're gonna so you can use your 3x socket. Okay, so got sidetracked for a minute. I had to uh, had to get a wrench for my brother to use. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get that gooey junk.
Okay, I found some gooey junk. Well, I, didn't, I thought I had a tube of it, but I don't have a tube. But I do have... Actually, I found two packets of it. So, uh, if you can see it, but this one's already been opened. So, I've, I had a brand new one that was in my toolbox in here, and I thought, well, I'm going to open that. So, I forgot one that's open, so I went in my other toolbox, and I thought, well, where's that tube? I think I might have used the tube up. Get the spray. that seems to be the main contact with those sand Yeah, I think that's what it takes to make a contact. And the uh, end of that switch is really very shiny, but I'll hit it a little bit too. so I can get it all wet so that when I put my gooey junk it gets dissolved. So, uh, put that in there. Are we still recording? The battery, I plugged it in when I was inside so it's bring that battery back up soon. So, this is the stuff. If you've never seen it, this will really save you a lot of trouble with corrosion on your battery terminals. That's what it's for. No crow gel, that's what this one's called. There's a bunch of different brands of it. I usually get a big old tube of it. Keep it for years. But it, it stops corrosion, so I think this is a good place to put it, too. Now, let's see. We're going to put our... Uh, I'm going to put some on both sides of my little switch. Although, I guess the underside is the only one that actually needs it. Yeah, the underside that does the contacting, the top. Actually, I'm going to do it anyway just to keep the whole thing from rusting it so badly. Okay, now I'm going to put the... Oh, I see why I had it. I was thinking when I first pulled it out, oh, I should have had it turned the other way, but now I kind of see. Well, I don't know. It's... See. Yeah. It's kind of concave. That's why I'm talking about it. It's kind of concaved a little bit from being bent or whatever. I don't know if you can even see it, but... I'm trying to think of which way would make it work better. I think... This way we'll push this in further, and that can usually sometimes that's your problem with these things is they just just like a tiniest little bit going in far enough to work. Ooh. Okay, it's just clicking. I'm starting to really think I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom of the other thing too, just to make sure that doesn't have something to do with it, with it all working right. And this is these raised up spots. That would be the only thing that would really make a contact. Put a little bit on the bolts too. Let's see, and it goes like that. So just back in the bag and wipe the greasy fingers off. So that I can handle this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Getting junk all over everything. Okay, so this goes like this. Actually, ah, now I'm gonna leave it. I was gonna say maybe it'd be better to have it. The horn would be honking if it was working right every time I move this. You can hear it making, it's sparking a little bit, making contact, and uh, you can hear the, uh, I don't know what I've done with my screwdrivers. I must have left them up on the workbench or something. Let's go get them.
the, the way the horn sounds okay when it does work, I don't think Screwdriver down in the abyss of the side of the seat. Good thing I vacuumed this thing the other day. All this crawling around and everything. Spark. If that if that horn was working right, it would be honking and going, driving me crazy. <laughs> so not working is actually not too bad right at the moment. I remember for all the years I had to. Usually it was turn signal switches that gave all the trouble. I'm trying to make sure that uh, I'm trying to make sure that that uh, plate that I was sanding on is not caught under these plastic insulators, because if it doesn't move, well the horn would be on and it won't go off. That's what would happen. It would hold it down. So before I really tighten it up make sure it's not I can just get a small screwdriver in there to kind of move it around I may not have got it right I was thinking maybe I should put it over the plastic deals but it would have just fell off so let's see if it can be moved around with it loose I still got greasy junk on my fingers Maybe that'll protect them from all this hard work. I can actually feel that current a little bit. I really don't remember ever oh, feeling 12 volts. That's the weirdest thing ever. That actually got me a little bit. I mean, the only time I've ever remember being feeling a shock from working on a car is when uh, I touch the distributor wire with the engine running. Plug wire, distributor wire, any of them. Just snug it up a little bit. It's not moving like it should. It should be rocking on there. I don't really want to put this back on there. Well, I can. It's not hard to get on and off. Maybe it's okay. I just think it's not. I can hear the clicking whenever I hit it. I always thought you could move this real easy. Maybe it doesn't move as far as I think. I think I'm going to try putting it on the other way, put it up on the plastic first, because I still don't know if I've got it trapped down. I think maybe I did. Still shocking me. Okay, so this time I'm going to uh, slide it on there first. The last time I put it down in there, see if I can get it to go. Put my finger, and that won't help. See, she can't really keep it on there. Is the thing. Okay, now it feels like maybe it's going to be more springy. Maybe if I kind of hold it in until I get the first screw started. There. It feels more bouncy this time. It should be kind of blue, bouncy, springy. And I think maybe this is going to be okay. 
thought that I kind of had a feeling that maybe I should do that and I thought well, that's kind of can't get it to do that very easily I thought well I can probably just move that top part around enough to get it to but I couldn't tell one way or the other if I'd got it you know out from under those plastic things so yeah, it's really hard to tell it seems like it will move a bit now like I remember this being the trickiest part of it all. I'm gonna snug them up this time and see if it uh, see if it acts like a horn button when I hit put the plastic part on there. <laughs> 